we have some new skid plates and sliders from Bay Area Metal Fab. What's up everyone? I hope you've been well. If you don't know who we are, my name is Zach, my wife is Tracy, and we along with our Siberian Huskies are the Sunshine State Vikings. Now we like to do a lot of outdoor adventures, off-roading, camping, hiking, overlanding, and just getting outdoors and having an awesome time all the while trying to explore the craft of sharing our story with you. Now today we're going to take to the garage we've got an upgrade that we're going to take care of on our off-road overland build loki here he is a 2014 toyota tacoma trd off-road and we like to consider him an off-road overland build because he's not the most capable off-road build and he's not the most travelable overland build he's right in the middle able to do both pretty decent now today we're going to take care of an upgrade on the off road side of Loki and we're going to be upgrading his body armor today. Let's go ahead and get everything laid out in the driveway behind us so we can show you what the new stuff is and why we're changing over to some of the new body armor. Real quick before we get going here I've got to point out one fact. We are Florida based adventurers and we are doing this in the midst of July and it is hot this year. We're going to be reaching temperatures of about 92, 93 that's one reason why we've brought the truck into the garage for this. Uh, it's not gonna help out that much, but we're just trying to do what we can. Uh, we're just gonna have to accept the fact that I'm gonna be sweating profusely throughout this install. Uh, but we've got the new equipment and we've gotta get it on the truck. So here's what we have. We have some new skid plates and sliders from Bay Area Metal Fab. They are a shop out in California. And there are a couple reasons why we went with Bay Area Metal Fab for Loki's new armor. The first is that a lot of the styles that Bay Area Metal Fab has matches some of the styles of the armor that we already have on Loki. And the second is that we really like what they do with heavily reinforcing the armor that they put out. Uh, this stuff is what I like to call bulletproof so let's start real quick with the skid plates here and go over some of the differences between what we already have and what we're putting on the truck now loki has always been equipped with a front skid plate setup it's that two-piece system that comes factory for the trd off-roads that skid plate has done us very well over the last couple of years um, we have always had it painted orange and to keep up with that orange color, we've had to take those skid plates off about twice a year and about every other time we have to beat those skid plates back into shape because they're just a thin sheet metal uh, construction for those skid plates. Uh, it's easy to beat back into shape, but they don't quite go back into shape like they ever used to. Uh, that's one of the reasons why we are upgrading the front skid plate as well. Uh, and you can see here that the new skid plates are way more reinforced. They are also quarter inch plate steel. So these are going to hold up to just a lot more of a beating than those old ones ever possibly could have. It's also a one piece construction uh, and that's going to be very nice as well. The next thing is the mid skid here. This is going to cover up the area for the transmission and protect the transmission oil pan. Uh, you can see again that it's heavily reinforced. This as well is quarter inch plate steel. These two pieces are going to join up making a seamless transition throughout the whole skid plate. Um, now we also got these bare metal from Bay Area Metal Fab so that we could try to keep up with that orange colored theme for Loki. 
Uh, this time, however, we're not intending to keep up with the painting of it. We have gone ahead and powder coated them. We're hoping this holds up a lot better than the spray paint ever did. Um, we had this done by B&J Powder Coating. Uh, it's a local shop here in Orlando and they did an absolutely fantastic job both with the powder coating and nailing the color of orange that we carry throughout Loki's theme here. So next, let's talk about the sliders here. These are Bay Area Metal Fab's 80 inch bolt-on sliders. They are inch and three quarter DOM tubing, making it very strong. We have opted to include a kick out in the back. That's gonna help protect the long body of the Tacoma and get it away from obstacles that might damage the side of the body. Um, being that they are bolt-on, Bay Area Metal Fab provides grade eight hardware for everything that we're gonna be mounting up today. It's some of the strongest hardware that you can be using for situations like this, where all of this stuff is intended to take a serious beating. Um, so these are the sliders, those are the skid plates. Let's go ahead and get started on swapping out the old stuff and installing the new stuff. So we're gonna start with taking off our old factory skid plate here. It's just four bolts. Uh, they're just 12 millimeter bolts here. Next, we've got the second portion of the first skid plate here. It's just held on with four 12 millimeter bolts again. So now with the factory skid plates, the next thing coming off are these reinforcement bars here that the front skid plate actually mounted to. This is where a lot of the reinforcement for those front skid plates actually came from, but these are not gonna be needed with the new skid plates. So we'll just go ahead and get a breaker bar out here because these are pretty tight. <sighs> So now that we've gotten the old factory front skid plate set up removed, including the reinforcement bars here, you can see some of the differences between what we used to have and what we will now have. Um, you can see this is the proper color of orange for Loki. Uh, you can see how faded and peach-like this orange has become. This is about the time I would be considering repainting all of this and beating all of this back into shape. You can see I've got a pretty good sized dent here that I'd probably be trying to work out. Um, but it just doesn't beat back into shape the way it ever used to. I've got a fold and a tear and this thing is just very worn out. Um, now, we took off the reinforcement bars here. The new skid plate setup doesn't need any reinforcement bars because it is just robust enough by itself. And then up here, you can see the 12 millimeter hardware that was holding all of the skid plates on and the new grade eight hardware, as well as four of the larger uh, frame hardware that was holding on the reinforcement bars here. Those are gonna be used as well. Um, everything on the new skid plate just attaches directly uh, to very stout frame sections. Um, so that's gonna be very nice there. Uh, the next thing we need to get going here is prepping up the front skid plate with Bay Area Metal Fab's cutout logo. Uh, they have some pre-drilled out holes here for this to sit just like that. This comes bare metal. I've already gone ahead and painted all of the hardware that's gonna be showing, as well as the bare metal logo here with a nice rubberized bed liner. Um, that way it can just continue tying in all of those black and orange accents that I carry throughout Loki here. So let's go ahead, get that done and start working on getting this front skid plate on.
with Bay Area Metal Fab's logo fixed to the skid plate, now we can start working on getting the skid plate up to the truck for mounting. In order to do that, I'm going to need one additional tool, which is gonna be a minor inconvenience with this whole bulletproof setup. The skid plate is about 80, 85 pounds because of how thick and durable it is. It's almost impossible to hold the thing up and get the bolts on to mount it. Uh, one of the inconveniences there that I can think of right offhand is if you ever need to take this thing off trail, there's no way you're ever putting it back on, on trail. Um, but either way, bulletproof setup, that's what we want. We're gonna go ahead and get the floor jack laid out here. close enough. I've got still just a little bit of play. I'm going to start trying to work in some of the hardware just loosely at first just to get everything lined up. And our last hardware setup. It's just some long through bolts just going through this cross member. And now we can get it all crank down nice and tight. The front skid is mounted up now. We can work on the next skid plate, the mid skid here. That's gonna be protecting our uh, transmission and transmission pan here, as well as our uh, front drive shaft. Um, it is going to lock in with this lip and it is going to hang on the back of this cross member here. You can see I've got a good bit of wear and tear here. I've, uh, I've put the truck up on several times on the cross member. So with the new skid plate, it's going to fully cover and wrap around here. And uh, we'll be able to uh, protect the cross member here a little better as well. But we've got to get these nuts off here first. So that's there's how it's gonna sit. Like I said, it has a nice seamless little edge. This is all gonna be tied together with uh, some just grade eight hardware. And then these nuts are gonna hold it off on the back on the frame rail. Let's go ahead and try to get everything mounted up.
All right, so this bolt here is just a little tricky to get to because the exhaust uh, mount is sitting right there. It'd probably be a lot easier. You can easily get to this with a with a box end wrench, and you can easily get to this with a box end wrench. Uh, if I had two of them, I, I'd probably be in good shape, or even a ratcheting box end wrench, but best thing I've got here is this just uh, swiveling adapter for this, so we'll just be able to get this just decently tight here with this setup. But there we go, that's got that pretty good. Nice, just gotta crank these down. I left them just a little loose so that way everything could kind of shift into place. But uh, for the most part, the skid plates are fully mounted. And so starting on the sliders, we have one big jumbled set of uh, hardware here. Like I said, I've already gone and painted everything that was bare metal. These were bare as well. I, I black bed lined these as well, just to keep them from rusting under inside the truck. Um, but we're just gonna go ahead and split all the hardware into two. That way we've got two complete sets one for the driver's side, one for the uh, passenger side. I've already gone and test fit all of these on before I sent the skid plates for powder coating. Um, so, you know, we've already kind of had everything. Oh no. I made a mistake. This is this is actually the washer for the front skid plate. I uh, I was confused and I actually ended up pulling washers out of this, just assuming I put the washers in there. We're gonna have to fix that real quick. I'll show you what I mean. This is for the front skid plate, the two through bolts that went through the cross member. It wasn't a washer that was supposed to go up on top of that. It was this bar for both bolts and then the nuts. Yeah, we're gonna need to get that washer back. Let's take care of that real quick. Luckily, this shouldn't be too hard to fix. You can see I've got pretty good access to where those uh, bolts came through that frame or the uh, cross member there. I'm gonna be able to just reach back there, get an open end wrench on that, and I'm gonna swap those two separate washers out for, for this bar. I'll be able to basically slide that up into place uh, where that belongs. So I'm gonna take care of that real quick here. Now that we've got that fixed, uh, we've got our two washers back, the bar is in place on the cross member. Uh, I'm gonna continue divvying up the hardware between the two sets. Now that we have our hardware divvied up between driver side and passenger side, on the driver side here where we're gonna start, we have just three things to prepare before we actually get the slider up into place and get it ready for actual mounting. So the first thing to prepare is this little bar nut. This is going to give us some assistance here at the cross member. There's a tab on the slider that's gonna come and mount down to this. Next, we need to unmount this little bracket. And then this will just get remounted just through the slider once it's mounted up. So we will just take this out and set it to the side. This cross member bolt here needs to get removed as well. We have some weather uh, just fixing to roll in. All right, so now that we have everything freed up on the driver's side, we can go ahead, get the slider up on the uh, floor jack, and we can try to get it in place for mounting here. All right. I think that may just be close enough for right now. Let's see. Close enough, yes, for sure. First, we're gonna get this uh, 14 millimeter bolt back in down here. Uh, this, is, this is coming up into the frame and through cross member. So we don't wanna lose alignment on this. 
So that's gonna be the first thing we're gonna make sure that we can just still get that threaded in. Then for the front cross member, we're gonna need just one bolt and one washer. That way we can go ahead and find alignment here with that bar nut. And then we can get our small bolt in the back. This is the only uh, small bolt that's gonna be in our kit here. There's just, uh, there's one factory hole that's a smaller diameter that they're grabbing up in the back. And that smaller hole is right here. This one seems a little tricky. This one is definitely a little pesky. It's a, it's a tight little spot. I've got the uh, socket wrench uh, at the end of my hand here, reach through the frame on the other side of the uh, gas tank. Uh, I wasn't able to get it with the wrench, so I'm just gonna take my time here and get this tightened up now because this is a little rough area to get to. And then let's go ahead and take care of this bracket bolt. So we're gonna try to get the uh, first two side mounting hardware bolts up through the top here. One of the issues, and Bay Area has a solution for it, is that the other end of the bolts are behind this boxed in part of the frame. So they give you this big long bar with uh, two welded nuts here. That, uh, that way you can kind of fish this in here and so you can try to get that attached. Okay, so we got the first of the two bolts. I've still got to put the further, the one that goes to the front in. Uh, the bar is on the back side of this bolt. Uh, in reality, they have just made it possible. I had to enlist the services of Tracy here to give a hand, and it was still very hard to get that bar back there to be able to grab those bolts. But it's on there now. We've just got to get the uh, last one up and then we can uh, continue on with the easy ones. It's all the way up. Bring it down. Bring it down. Bring it down. Yeah. You didn't feel it? No. Oh, let me try this. That should be lined up. Okay, let's give that a try. Am I moving it? Mm -hmm. Okay, well then I think I've got it. Yeah, it doesn't move now. Okay. The sliders here only have uh, four more available slots for hardware, um, and they're just through the frame. It's not boxing or anything, so these are gonna get uh, two washers, one on either side, and a nut, and they're gonna be pretty, pretty straightforward. Just kind of putting them in along as they go. So now that we have the driver's side fully mounted up, we've got all the hardware securing that in place. 
these sliders are really nice and stout. You can see they're not very stuck out and flat like a, like a sidestep. They are uh, angled up like sliders to keep everything up off the body. Um, but now that we're done on the driver's side, we're going to go ahead and move to the passenger side. Everything is going to be just about the exact same, except for a few differences, and we'll show you those real quick. So for the preparation of the passenger side here, we have the transmission cross member nut tab again. Get that in place there. Then we have the 14 millimeter uh, cross brace back here that needs to be taken out again. And then the big difference is that on the passenger side, we have this box here. So we're gonna have to take this off and unmount it um, so we can get the slider up behind it. Passenger side is fully prepped up. We're just gonna time lapse this real quick. You've already seen it. So the passenger side is fully mounted up. Uh, a lot easier on this side. There's not as many brake lines or anything, uh, a lot less obstructions. The only other thing that was different was that uh, box. It was a connector bracket that has kind of a cover over it. The bracket is held in with two 12 millimeter bolts and then it's got a cover with two 10 millimeter bolts on it. The bracket actually has to go forward one hole and now it's only being held by one 12 millimeter bolt which is, it's fine, it's not going anywhere. And then we've got the, the cover on it. The problem was that the bracket ended up too close to this little support bar, and then the cover doesn't really fit if it's so close to that support bar. So just slide it forward, put the bolts in, it's all good. The only other thing that we noticed on this side was that there was another bolt back here that we probably missed on the driver's side, and we did. So we've gone ahead and taken care of that one as well. But everything is fully mounted up, it's super stout, and uh, we're really excited to see how these things are gonna perform. Yes, yes, yo, gotta keep it fresh, yo. Yes, yes, yo, microphone check, yo. Yes, yes, yo, rockin' with the best, yo. From the north, the south, east, the west, yo. Yes, yes, yo, rockin' with the best, yo. Yes, yes, yo, microphone check, yo. Yes, yes, yo, gotta keep it fresh, yo. From the north, the south, east, the west, yo. So overall, everything looks awesome. Uh, the sliders. You can see right down here this line how well that kick out is going to help protect everything keeps everything right off the body there we're able to bump and slide off of that the new skid plates look great a little less showy as they don't have as much on the side but they still look fantastic so yeah, new skid plates and sliders from Bay Area Metal Fab. We are pretty excited about how everything came together. They look great, everything fit perfectly. We didn't have any issues. The powder coating looks fantastic. B&J did an excellent job powder coating them. They nailed the color and the quality looks great. Uh, like I said, they're just a local powder coating shop here in Orlando. We'll probably use them for future things as we have needs. Um, we'll put some information down below for both Bay Area Metal Fab and for B&J, so you can check them out. They're down in the description there. But we need to get everything cleaned up here in the garage. We're gonna leave you off here. As always, thank you for watching. Do more of what you love, and we hope to see you on the next one. To learn more about us and find out ways to help support the adventures, visit our website, sunshinestatebikings.com. And to keep up with our adventures, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification button and follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Sunshine State Vikings.